What's up guys? What's up YouTube? What's up? <laughs> We're about to break down Full Metal Jacket. My guy, this was made in 1987. That's crazy. This movie was made when I was one years old. What's up guys? All right, so before we dive into Full Metal Jacket, we just want you to understand that we're jumping into this movie to um, talk about it from a military perspective. At no point in time do any of the things said in this movie, movie reflect our views and our personal feelings. There's a lot of things in this movie that we don't agree with um, and that are honestly just offensive. But that being said, we want to review the movie, look at the tactics, and really just give you guys a perspective on what's realistic and what's not. But please, at any point, don't feel like the movie is a reflection of our opinions. We just have to throw that out there. We're just watching a movie. Thank you very much. This shit is like no holds back, like no political correctness, none of that shit. This is when you were just sending fucking real out into the world and hoping it stuck. I am hard, but I am fair. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally worthless. <laughs> and my orders are to weed out all non-hackers who do not pack the gear serving my beloved cult. Well, there's one thing that you won't like, Private Snowball. They don't serve fried chicken and watermelon Ooh. on a daily basis in my mess halls. And you, John Wayne, is this me? Who said that? Who the fuck said that? Why would he say that? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there's no explanation in the movie, like as to why he would be, why he would do that to this guy. <laughs> he he's they call him they end up calling him Joker, but I don't understand. I don't understand the is this you John Wayne joke. I don't. The fact that you would have the balls to like speak out like that is insane. So my question is, when you're in. Uh, basic or you're in that situation where you have a drill sergeant, you have basically a commanding officer who's going to yell at you and say whatever he wants. Without saying too much, are they allowed to essentially say whatever they want to say to you without not, not any anymore. type of repercussion? Not anymore. Obviously, back then was a different time, but now, mm -hmm. like, they don't need to, they don't need to use that kind of talk mm -hmm. to get you down. You just know that what they can do is enough. Oh, okay. You don't have to come at me and call me, you know, white trash or anything racially offensive. You could just tell me, like, do you have a problem? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. But if I say, yeah, I got a problem with you, he'd be like, okay, start pushing. And he'll make me do push-ups until I throw up on myself. Mm. He'll make me run up and down the hallway. He'll make me run laps until I throw up. He'll make me, you know, they, they have the power to just PT you into oblivion. Right. Worst thing he could do He'll make me stand there and watch everybody else get destroyed. So, like, their power over you is intense. So, the last thing you're going to do is speak out and say some stupid shit to be the target. Your whole goal in basic is to blend in and just be invisible. Mm -hmm. Every time they walk past, you're just like, please keep going. Please keep going. The worst thing that could happen is when they <laughs> stop and you're like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. And he looks at you and you're like, he's like, what the fuck is your problem? Ah! Like, what do I say? You just want to keep going, keep going. So like that, that's over the top. But you know, some people are really stupid and have no idea what they're getting themselves into. Apparently. Who's a slimy little communist shit twinkle toe cocksucker down here? We're gonna find his own death war. I'll PT you until your asshole for sucking buttermilk. Was it you, you scroungy little fuck? Huh? Sir, no, sir. You little piece of shit. You look like a fucking worm. I'll bet I love you. Sir, no, sir. Sir, I said it, sir. <laughs> Well, I admire your honesty. Hell, I like you. You can come over to my house and fuck my sister. <laughs> you little scum. So I know we're spending a lot of time on this one opening scene, but why yeah. would he go to his house and fuck his sister? You <laughs> think let him know? I don't understand. Dude, the first six minutes of this movie are iconic. We can't skip any of it. It's so fucking good. <laughs> Besides, if you like, if you could get past like the the racial slurs, but understand that the racial slurs are to reverse racism, right? You're trying to right. bring everybody down. This guy shit talking is fucking <laughs> level ten. I've never, I've never seen someone that's matched his level of shit talking ability. Like so <laughs> many people in the military thrive to talk shit the way that he mm. talks shit because it's just fucking epic. I just don't know why you'd let me go to your house and fuck your sister. <laughs> I don't like it. You don't scare me. Work on it. <laughs> Bullshit. It looks to me like the best party 
you ran down to crack your mama's ass and ended up as a brown stain on the mattress. Steers and queers come from Texas, private cowboy. And you don't much look like a steer to me, so that kind of narrows it down. <laughs> Sir, no, sir. Are you a beater pupper? Sir, no, sir. Did your parents have any children that live? No, What's up guys, this video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. If you want to be physically fit and ready for SFAS, then you need to go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. He's a former Green Beret and he does an awesome program. Use code word BUCK and he will get you right with a discount. Also, you're going to need the right gear for the job. So go check out our site, the FNGacademy.com, hit shop, sign up for the email list and make sure that you have the right gear hand selected by Green Berets so you're not wasting any money and you go into selection with every advantage possible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right, Calder. <laughs> the <laughs> formations on March and Watch. <laughs> is, that, is that Fisk? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's sucking his thumb with his pants down. Why is it so mean to him? Because he's just like not getting it together. <clears throat> he's an actual Marine. In real life. He was a Marine. The drill sergeant? Yeah. Oh, okay. What's the Lexington's box? It sucks, man, because those fucking blankets are uncomfortable as shit, and, like, your bed's always got to be tucked away perfect, and, like, there's no edge to the fucking top bunk, and for sleepwalkers that lied on their fucking to get in, I was terrified of falling off the whole time. Like, I had one guy in basic at one point started losing his mind. Like, this guy starts losing his mind, and he would sit on the top bunk at the edge of the bunk, and he would be perched up on his hands and his feet like he's a fucking gargoyle. And he would just be looking around like this. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? And so, like, you think, oh, why don't you tell somebody? But, like, dude, you don't know what's going on. Like, you're transitioning, too. Like, you don't know yeah. if you're, he's, it's normal to be fucked up for a little while. Or are you fucked up? Is he fucked up? I don't know fucking know. Some people are just trying to get out of it. So you don't know. But he ended up getting his rifle taken away. Dude, it's crazy to think that <clears throat> you could have a life and then end up. In a place like that where you have no rights, where you are just basically told yeah. what to do, when to do, in a cold environment like that. Fucking crazy. The cool thing is, like, when you join that, though, you start to bond together. And so the better you get at it, the more, like, less attention you get and the more positive treatment, which mm -hmm. they replicate in this. As he starts to do better, the drill sergeant starts to be nicer to him. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. That's how. That's their progression. So you start to feel the unity is like you're not trying to you're not an individual anymore. The better you could do exactly what everyone else is doing, mm -hmm. the more you get left alone. So it's like you, there's so much comfort in the brothers and you have next to you because you're like, if if I do what he does and he does what I do and we're together, like we bond. Right. So basic is a bonding experience for people going from civilian life to military life. It's crazy. Like, like you guys are go you guys are power only in each other. Individually, you're fucked, but together you're strong. Mm. And that's what they're developing in them. Not to be killers, not all this other shit. It's a bond. If I if they can make us brothers, I will inherently do anything I can for you in combat. Right. They don't need to be like, you're a killer. You say killer things. Like, man, I don't need to know how to kill. I'm not going to combat to kill somebody. I'm going to combat to protect the brother that we formed, the bond that we formed in basic and in the training, right? So if I have to kill that person to protect you, I'll kill them. Right. They're not, but they're, people get confused and they think that the army's trying to, or the military's trying to make a killer mindset. No, they're trying to develop a bond that's so strong that you would kill for the bond. So doing shitty and basic he's not uh -huh. completely there mentally okay and he's overweight and so he's not physically fit so essentially what he's doing is just using drill sergeant tactics to bring him up to speed at first you try to break him off and get him out so uh -huh. if they got any quit in them they quit and get rid of them right 
he proved that he didn't have quit in him. So now you have the challenge of bringing him up to speed. So one thing you could do to bring him up to speed is pair him up with someone who's doing really well. Mm. So then that person could coach him up and start to motivate him and stuff like that. So Pyle doesn't, he ends up, he keeps getting in trouble and then everyone else starts to get smoked. Okay. So they give him a, what do they call a sock party? You ever heard of a sock party? No. It's not good. I've never seen this, just for the record. This is some some old school shit to get someone up to speed. So under your watch, never happened? No. So they put bars of soap inside their socks. Everybody gets a turn. <laughs> Jesus, you know, bad hurt. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is dark. I got dark, but it's, I mean that's that's what they call a sock party. I I've never seen it. I would never want to do that or be part of that because at the end of the day, like working out, I'd rather do push-ups and be smoked than fucking mm -hmm. like destroy a human being. That's I don't know. But it's easy to watch a movie and be like, uh. I'm sure there's dudes out there in like fucking Vietnam era that, hey, we put a sock party on a dude and it fixed them, right. you know. So I, I don't like to judge, but I don't know that watching it like I don't like it. Seven six two millimeter full metal jacket. Mm. What is your major malfunction, numb nuts? Didn't mommy and daddy show you enough attention when you were a child? Oh, shit. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, Jesus. What's the point of this movie? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. What are they trying to show? Like... <laughs> I told you it's the it's the duality of man. That's what he explains in when the colonel asks him like why you're you have uh, born to kill and then a peace sign. He's like, well, I I see it as the duality of man. This whole movie is showing the opposing forces. Like we're gonna we're gonna bond you together so tight, but for some of you, it's gonna be the worst thing that could have ever happened. We're going to put you in war and then you're going to want combat and then you're going to have to do things in combat that you wanted. That's the worst thing ever to happen. And it's like, and I don't know if I'm explaining that right. It's just the way that I perceive this is like everything in this movie comes at a cost. The ups comes with the downs. The It's like the black comes with the white. Like nothing is just is what it is. Everything has its consequence. Mm. And so to me, this movie is just portraying all the dark along with the light on the bird ass i want to be in it i want more combat him you know? and then they're so they're on the bird and he's like almost throwing up you guys ought to do a story about me sometime why should we do a story about you because i'm so fucking good <laughs> that ain't no shit neither Look at his face. Sometimes. So that to me, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I picture oh. this to be realistic. Like in Vietnam, that they were, they were so knee deep in nasty shit and like grimy war. Uh -huh. And the reality of war that their fucking perspective is changing. Their reality is changing. It's almost like being, like we talked about, being so rich right. that you have a different perspective and you lose touch with reality. The same thing is happening with these guys in war. They're losing touch with reality. So it's like they're doing shit that is normalized that they don't realize anymore is not fucking okay. It's crazy, man. So like, you know, it's fucking nuts, man. And it's it's crazy to me that this movie was able to like <sighs> capture all this insanity. But they always put in the fact that they know it's not right. Like the guy throwing up. Yeah. They're not highlighting it as a positive thing. Right. They're they're showing him like proud of himself. Like, yeah, man, I kill them all. Like, you should do a story on me for the the fucking army newspaper. They think yeah. he thinks that that's okay, like that he's killed all these people, women and children included, while the camera guys vomiting from your actions. Like it's showing just this fucking realness of life from both perspectives at the same time. 
So then they start moving towards the buildings. I feel like it probably would have been a good idea to start laying some suppressive fire down before moving. Mm -hmm. So they're bounding, which is you go set, one person set. Ideally, they have your cover fire in case you take contact while you're moving. Okay. You bound, next person sets, and then you bound, next person sets. So it's a good alternating way. So there's always somebody with a gun up mm -hmm. um, in case they're like a possibility of a, a attack, right? But when there's already a ambush, seemingly ambush set up, you don't have to worry about innocent civilians. Right. Might as well lay some cover fire to make sure that there's no heads watching you for snipers, um, spotters for indirect fire or anything like that. Ends up being the case that there was an ambush laid in there. So they had their uh, whatever fucking landmines they had set up. Mm -hmm. They look like landmines because they're so uniform the way they exploded. Right. Whether it's landmines or, you know, whatever they had, it was clearly like an initiation for an ambush. Mm. So I would have taken that as like, which they did. They started bounding, but just throw some cover fire down. Keep some heads down. At least it'll it'll cover you a little bit more than just right. walking in. So he's he's reloading. They thought they just took the contact. He sees four guys run past, four right. enemies run past, and then reloads and then just dumps a mag on those other two guys. First of all, when you shoot people with five, five, six, they don't just get hit and fall over like the minute they get touched. Right. They don't even know they got hit. Mm. So likely he could have shot those guys and they would have continued their bounding movement. But you already had four guys pass. So why are you just okay? killing those last two guys right you're about to get flanked like he they're maneuvering on your element so i think the idea here is that they're running away but they're so close that if that was me i would not consider that running away i consider that hey we're being flanked we got four guys whatever cardinal direction that is you know 100 meters mm -hmm. and then let's move towards them and go take them out so then this is a big issue that I have with this one. They send a dude, uh, their nav guy mm -hmm. realizes that, hey, I think we're going the wrong direction. So like, all right, we'll change it up. So like you go and check and see if we have a route. And they send him by himself. One is, two is one and one is none is the same. Mm -hmm. Two is one, one is none. You don't ever send a guy by himself. No one's got his, like his back. No one can pull him out if he gets shot. Like by himself, he's fucked. The crazy thing is they send him out and then they send another guy by himself again to go get him. Mm. So then that guy gets hit. So now they got two guys by themselves. And then old hero over here, then he runs out by himself. So now you got three guys that are going independently by themselves to the spot and they're just getting hit by the sniper. Sniper person? And boom, the sniper ends up being a little girl. So he runs out of ammo. Oh. This is the culminating part of the movie is to like then touch on morals. Okay. So now they're standing over this little girl's body. Mm -hmm. She was the sniper. She had already like killed two of their guys. Um, she got shot. She's going to die. And the peace guy, uh, Joker, doesn't want to leave her to just die alone and like slowly de die. Mm. And the, the other guy's like, I don't care, just leave her. And he's like, you know, she's dead anyway. And he he feels guilty, so he doesn't know what to do. So he ends up shooting her and putting her out of her misery. Mm. And so then he has this huge battle with, uh, you know, what to do morally. Right. So the entire movie, you're just going back and forth with like conflicting right. ideals and I, you know, like so good, emotions, man. and yeah. it's always the good mixed with the bad. So this movie was, <laughs> it's not, <dude. laughs> not my cup of tea. Yeah, <laughs> it's not typically the movie I think that I want to do, but yeah. So it's crazy though to look at a, a war movie from 1987 focused on Vietnam and like the horrors of Vietnam, and then now we jump forward to. Afghanistan wars and Iraq and it's a different kind of war like it's a lot of similarities but there's also 
a lot of differences in the fact that, you know, it, it seems like we figured some things out about getting soldiers out of there. Right. Like Vietnam, you could stay there for years, mm -hmm. like years. That's too long. So I think we learned from Vietnam that if you leave soldiers in a combat zone for too long, they change too much. They're too pulled away from society and we really start to lose them to the horrors of war. So as someone who's experienced killing and, you know, being in that environment, it's very much important to pull somebody out of that early and often so they can reconnect with society, uh, reconnect with their morals and their values and their beliefs. So you don't go down this dark road, which is completely possible even to this day. So you, you guys asked for full metal jacket. Damn. I didn't. But we did it. <laughs> you asked for it. We did One it. Once again, another. there's some stuff in here we don't agree with, guys. And we're not saying that we condone any of this. So, I mean, like all the, the racist stuff, it's, it yeah. was hard to, you know, a lot of it's hard to watch. But that's the point of this movie is to really confront people with the realities of war um, and what people go through psychologically when they're dealing with war, especially long periods of it like they were in Vietnam. So hope you guys like it. We'll see you on the next episode. That's it for Beers and Breakdowns. I got to go pull Abel out of his newly found depression uh, because I don't think the war life suits him very much. He's all sad panda now. Nope. It's just a movie. <sighs> so, like, that little girl, she's not actually dead right there. She, it's a movie. So she's she was fine. No one was hurt in the making of well, it's Full film Metal ball. Jacket. It's film ball. <laughs> it is. It's filmed a little <laughs> Kudos too Kudos to well. them, but fuck. Yeah. So, all right, guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye, guys. Peace.